Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Gabriel Aguiar Productions. So I get many times the question, how do I apply effects to my character? Or how do I use effects in my game, like in an action role playing game? Or in a MOBA like League of Legends or even Battle Right, you know? So that's exactly what we are going to see today. We are going to see how to create a simple attack system for a third person character. And we are going to see the steps I took to achieve something similar to this. This project is available on my Patreon page, links in the description in case you are interested. So, with that being said, let's see how we can do this. The first thing I needed was obviously a character. And for those who wanna follow along, you can come here to mix ammo and you can choose a character. I chose this one, for example, and download it as an FBX for Unity in T-Pose. Then I pressed on Find Animations and searched and download one island animation, one walk animation with in place check, don't forget that, one run cycle also with in place check and four different attacks for four different effects. Just remember to download the animations as FBX for Unity and without skin. Then I imported it all to Unity, everything nice and organized, drag my character to the scene, I also created a material, applied all the text as you know, and made a few adjustments to the values as well. Now I saved this character as a prefab, just in case, and then I needed to apply the animations to the character. So I created an animation controller, which is going to be divided in two layers, one for movement and the other for the attack, with the weight set to the maximum. In the movement layer, I created a blend tree and if we double click it, we can enter and then I add three motions with right click. The first for the idle animation, the second for the walk, and the third for the run animation. Ok, so then I needed to add this animation controller to my character. And I also added this amazing movement input script. This script is from this site, the Filmstorm site, and it has great content. The script also advises to create an input magnitude, an input X and an input Z on the animation controller. I also made some modifications here for the player movement to control its movement speed. So now in parameters, I changed the name of the blend tree driver to input magnitude and added the input X and input Z too. Now I only needed to fix the collider of my character controller and move the Y to 1. Ok, so once that was set up, I needed the camera movement. And it turns out Filmstorm also has a great tutorial on the same page for this, so go check it out, it's really worth it. But here's a quick guide in case you wanna follow along. Basically you wanna start by installing the Cine Machine from the Package Manager. And once it's installed, you can come here and create a free look camera. This camera appears and now we need to drag and drop our character to the follow and also to the look at input of the free look camera. And the camera automatically focuses on the feet of the character, which is the root of the character. But I want this to be over the character, to be in a third person perspective. So I increased the tracked object offset of each rig to 1.5. And now it's focusing at the back of our character and I just needed to increase the radius of the middle rig to around 5.5 so the camera is further away. And by the way, you can turn off these guides in Game Window Guide. Now, I only need to increase the rig radius of the top and the bottom, and the controls are inverted, so I only need to turn on the invert of the Y axis and turn it off for the X axis. So once I had this awesome third person character set up, where I could move my player and look around smoothly, now I want to be able to show to the player where the attack is going to appear, like they do in many MOBAs like League of Legends or in Battle Right. So to be able to do that, first I create this circle in Photoshop, and it's something very simple, where I start with an empty file of 1000 by 1000 pixels, and then use the ellipse tool this one, and up here in fill, I selected gradient and switch it to radial. 
I also set the stroke to empty and now to create a proportional circle I hold shift and alt at the same time and click more or less in the center to create a circle of around 700 pixels. I center the circle by selecting both layers, press V and align it here. Once that is done I go back to the graded options to set the opacity of the first key to zero and push these keys more or less around here so I have this nice faded inner glow. Then I exported this as a PNG without the background. So back in Unity, I imported the circle and created an empty game object called Marker. That will have a particle system attached as a child. This particle system will loop every second and the circle will leave one second only. There's no start speed and the start size is 10. And in emission I use the burst with one particle only and we don't need the shape model but I needed a simple fade to make it look like it's blinking so I used this gradient in color of a lifetime. I also turn on rotate of a lifetime so it rotates 90 degrees which is more than enough and then in the render I set this to render horizontally only. I needed a material for the circle so I created one and uses a simple additive shader that I made in shader graph and once I apply the texture to the material I applied the material to the particle system and that's it, we have our marker on the ground. It was a bit too bright so I decreased the opacity and changed it to a light blue. Now I only needed to save this as a prefab so I can instantiate via script. So in that script now I needed a public reference to that marker prefab and I also needed a boolean to know if it's aiming or not. So I instantiate my marker in the start function and as soon as I instantiate it, I make sure it's off. Now to know if we are aiming, I'm gonna be using the right click button on my mouse to activate the marker on the ground and set aiming to true. And as soon as we stop holding the right mouse button, as soon as it's up basically, I set the aiming to false and deactivate the marker on the ground as well. Ok, so that's the easy part, now I wanted to make sure the marker was snapped to the ground and only appears when the player is aiming to the ground. So I'm going to create a perpendicular ray that grows from the center of the camera to infinity basically. To check if that ray hits the ground, I use the physics ray cast that it's going to collide only with a certain layer that I'm going to define in the inspector, basically a layer mask because I don't want this ray to collide with my character. So once this ray collides with the ground layer, I'm going to reposition the marker to that specific location of the ray collision. And since this is in the update function, it will keep on updating the marker position. And if it's not colliding, then I turn off the marker. Now I assign this script to my character, change the colliding layer to match the ground, which is in default for now, and then assign the marker prefab I created earlier. Once this was working well, I decided to move on to the next part, where we actually spawn the effects we want. So I basically knew that I only wanted to spawn the effect once the player was aiming and if the player clicked on the left mouse button. Basically, we aim with the right mouse button and attack with the left button. So I'm going to instantiate an effect in the marker position and then destroy the effect after 5 seconds. What I also did is create a public list where I will assign the effects in the inspector and for testing purpose I assign the first element of that list to the effect to spawn variable. So I decided to test this out with one of my packages available in the asset store and in my Patreon page as well, the Unique Magic Abilities Volume 1, which I'll have the link in the description if you are interested in. So once I have the effects imported, I choose this effect, the Ball Red ability, and assign it here. And now it's starting to look quite interesting. I only needed to trigger the attack animations of my character. So in order to do that, in the second layer of my animator controller, I added an empty state that is going to have a transition 
to the attack 01 state. That transition will be triggered by a trigger called attack 01 too. And now I only need to choose the attack animation and assign it to the attack state. Now in the script I knew I needed a reference to the animator attached to my character. And then I instantiated in the start function. Now in the attack part I only needed to say that I'm going to trigger the attack 01 animation. And that's it, one task down. So the next part is selecting the effect with the keyboard. For that part I needed to add three new attacks to my animation controller as well as the respective triggers and then in the code I made a VFX selector that selects the effect when pressing 1, 2, 3 or 4 in the keyboard. It's a basic function that assigns the selected attack to the effect to spawn variable. And up here I select the attack animation according to the attack selected. And I also made sure the character stops moving when it's charging the attack by simply setting the movement speed to zero. And then I decided to create a very basic arena in Blender, imported that to Unity, I added some basic lights too, and I made a few adjustments to the marker on the ground and to the camera, and this is the end result. I think it's very nice, I had a blast doing this, I think I may even add some enemies, who knows? So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new as well. And this project is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested in supporting me. There will also be a demo available in my itch.io page. All the links are in the description by the way. And I just want to say a special thanks to my super mega patrons, which are Alex Dixon, Christian Mercino, Goblin Plague, James Finley, Jens Anderson, Juan Mendiola, Tirita, Warden Studios, Yannick Sailor, X Game Dev, and Ioni. You guys are amazing, and I could be more thankful of your support. I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial, and I really hope to see you in the next one.